Hello students. So we have the fourth part of the Thimbleberry stories. Um, and uh, also with this one, there is a writing assignment. I'm going to tell you about it before I read. So in, the story is going to be about um, the a picnic that our main character goes on. And afterwards, after you listen to the story, I would like you to um, write about where you like to have a picnic, when you like to have a picnic, with who, what would you eat. Tell me about your ideal picnic. Okay, so Mud Puppies Picnic. When it was not busy, when he was not tending his blue cottage on Thimbleberry Lane, Nigel Chipmunk often liked to walk down to Passalong Pond, where his friend Mud Puppy lived. Mud Puppy was a stout gray salamander who was always trying to improve himself. He did leg lifts each morning, ate only the worst tasting food because he thought they were better for him, and even one summer tried to read every book on in the Thimbleberry Library so he might become more interest a more interesting salamander. In spite of Mud Puppy's attempts at perfection, Nigel very much enjoyed his company, especially since Mud Puppy was such a good boatman. Nigel loved to boat, but he wasn't very good at it. When, one, when he once built his very own rowboat to take out to Passalong Pond, he wound up living on water bugs for two days because he could not get the boat out to make a straight line back to shore. But this did not dampen Nigel's enthusiasm for boating as long as someone else was navigating. And in this role, Mud Puppy being a good pond dwell being a pond dweller was superb. Thus, one hot summer day when Nigel was weary of ground and grass, he decided to visit Mud Puppy in hopes of boating. Naturally, the salamander was delighted to see him. Mud Puppy was in his kitchen concocting a healthy tonic when Nigel arrived. The tonic must have consisted of a good number of beets, for, for there were a slippery purple puddles everywhere. Mud Puppy offered Nigel a drink of tonic to stiffen the pie, spine and ankles he said, and being a considerate chipmunk, Nigel accepted, though he was not very interested either, either in tonics or spines. As expected, the drink was quite nasty, but Nigel... as delicately as he could, promised himself next time he would bring his own refreshments to Passalong Pond. Would you care to go boating today? Nigel asked his friend. Yes, indeed, answered the salamander. Swimming, swimming gets, swimming gets, ah, swimming along gets soaked alone, gets so tiresome. I it would be lovely to have a companion on the pond, fresh air, sun, nothing be better for the health. Nigel was actually more interested in floating, polite, floating, politely agreed. And, and shall I pack a picnic lunch for us to take? Asked N Mud Puppy. Nigel hesitated. Although he very much disliked Mud Puppy's food, he could think of no way out of the situation. Mud Puppy might be offended if he said no thank you. So instead, Nigel said, Lovely! 
Excellent, said Mud Puppy. Why don't you run out to the dock then and ready the boat while I put a few things together? And I see you've no boating hat. Take mine. I'll be out in a wink. Nigel accepted the hat and Mud Puppy's kindness with gratitude. The salamander's good heart more than made up for his bad taste in tonics. Nigel went out toward the dock, eagerly approaching Mud Puppy's boat. There she was, a beautiful, a, be a lovely birch boat that Mud Puppy had christened Fern. Nigel set about brushing leaves from Fern's interior, checking the condition of her oars, wiping a bit of mud from her prow. The boat bobbed gently up and down in the water, and for a moment, Nigel remembered the thrill of having his own little boat, being his own sailor. Then he remembered the water bugs, and he and he and was glad he'd given the boat to a beaver and her babies on the other side of the pond. Presently, Mud Puppy arrived, a large green knapsack slung across his back. Nigel dreaded to think what sort of lunch might be inside that pack. He decided to put it out of his mind and enjoy the day. With Mud Puppy at the oars, Nigel untied the boat, giving it a good push from the dock, and they were off. The coolness of the breeze, the green silvery water, the clear blue sky, all these made Nigel wonder why he had not been born a salamander. Mud Puppy always kept a net in the boat for entertainment and he and Nigel amused themselves by seeing what they could scoop up. First, they scooped a crayfish who, had, who gave them a good piece of her mind before returning to the water. Then they scooped up a cricket frog who was quite relieved. It was only a salamander and chipmunk who had netted him and not a little boy. who might take him home to live in a jar. They scooped up more water bugs than either cared to count. Tired from all the excitement of scooping, they lay back in the boat and let it lead them, lead itself as they talked of the goings, goings on in Passalong Pond and on Thimbleberry Berry Lane. Nigel told Mud Puppy about the new brick floor he had, he was putting in the kitchen, and the salamander had some use, some very useful advice for making the brick stick. They talked easily and quietly as friends do when floating on water on a beautiful day. Then M Mud Puppy announced it was lunchtime. Oh dear, thought Nigel. And though his stomach was feeling very empty, he could not bring himself to look forward to the meal. Still, he managed an enthusiastic re response and helped Mud Puppy pull up a small shade up at a small shaded island on the pond. The two found a nice soft free pine spot free of pine needles and mud, mud pu puppy brought forth the pack after the sal salamander carefully removed a lovely picnic cloth of blue and white checker check blue and white check then he brought a out a uh, uh, then he brought out sparkling pink crockery plates a, and real crystal goblets and silver flatware. Nigel was amazed. He had never seen a picnic so beautifully prepared. He told himself 
that no matter how tasty the food might be, the tableware would more than make up for the lack of such things as potato salad and deviled eggs. And just as Nigel was thinking this, Mud Puppy took the cover off of a crockery pot and revealed to him a lovely yellow potato salad. Then a lid came off a platter of cold deviled eggs decorated with olives. And to Nigel's further astonishment, Mud Puppy unveiled the crowning touch a two-layer chocolate cake. And there they are on their lovely picnic. The salamander surprised Nigel with really good food. Look at their hats in the boat. That looks like a lovely place to have a picnic. But Mud Puppy, how did you manage all this in so short a time? Asked Nigel. The salamander smiled. Since our last meal together, when you turned quite green over the broccoli beets salad, I determined to always have something better to prepare for your next visit, dear friend. Enjoy. The salamander then pulled forth a large brown sandwich bursting with turnip mash and bean curd for himself. He bit into the sandwich with gusto. It was the most magnificent picnic Nigel had ever attended. And to repay Mud Puppy for his extraordinary kindness, at day's end, Nigel himself rode them all the way back home and it was a perfectly straight line. Now, now, remember, your writing is to tell me about your perfect picnic. Where would you like to have the picnic? What would you eat? Who would be there with you? Tell me about a perfect picnic for you.